Hey, what's up, guys? This is Adam with the Airtime Misfits podcast alongside Nick. How's it going, guys? It's been a while, but we are back with a terrifying episode. So terrifying that you could multiply it to the third power Ooh. because we're going to be talking about T3 at Kentucky Kingdom. Stay tuned. however you look at it, mm -hmm. is a uh, Vacoma SLC that opened at one of my, honestly, one of my favorite parks uh, in the United States, Kentucky Kingdom, back in 95. So this was an early model Vacoma SLC, as I believe they debuted that whole model in 1995, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, I read on Wikipedia that the first one opened over at Wallaby, yeah, Wallaby Holland. Yep. Uh, opened in 94 and then 95, which is the year that T2 opened. Nine of these models opened that year. That's right. So and probably your mind erasers and whatnot. Yeah, yep. And I know T2 was a clone of the first model, which was called El Condor at Wallaby Holland. Uh, yep. It is a clone of that. And I believe most of these SLCs are clones. I think there's a couple that have a, a few like slight like variations or they're like mirror images of each other, but for the most part, it's the same ride experience on all of them. Yeah, the same I mean, terrible ride experience. The, the same terrible ride experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert: power. we don't like this roller coaster. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're we're not the biggest fans out no. there. No, but um, it it does have a fun history. Uh, it does. Like the coaster itself has a fun history and more so even Kentucky Kingdom has a fun history, which actually would be a fun uh, episode to do sometime. Even though the park's not defunct, it was uh, closed Anymore. for a while. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. maybe another episode we'll do one on Kentucky Kingdom and slash Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom to where it, it really is. is really yeah. is a great park and it is really inspirational to see how far it's come. Oh, yeah. And uh by far, its most outdated attraction was the giant red sore thumb in the middle of the park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, boy. Uh, I mean, that. if you've ever been to Kentucky Kingdom, you know that once you kind of cross that bridge from the entrance, you are basically staring at T3. It's yeah. right in the middle of the whole park. It's and hard you, to miss. Yeah. Probably back in the day, 95, when they were, you know, the park was not even 10 years old, if I'm correct. Um, yeah. And, you know, this probably was the attraction. And uh, oh, yeah. obviously, obviously being right next to the uh, airport there in Louisville, there's height restrictions. And so this was a coaster that met the requirements at the time was really state of the art. And so um, and back then they painted it all black. So it was just kind of this menacing thing uh -huh. uh, to meant to like lure you in um, for the longest time. Um, and now it is just that giant red sore thumb. Um, <laughs> it does look like a giant sore thumb. <laughs> it's just bad. And yeah, and like you said, all of these models are seemingly the same. They're like a minute and a half long. They all have a rollover, a sidewinder, and like a double inline twist. And yeah. You're done. And then yeah. you jolt the bricks. Yeah, there's five so, inversions on these. Uh, the height is 101 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, like you said, it's got about a minute and 36 second ride duration. I was going to say, like, an, it's interesting, you know, at one point it was all black. Because I think originally when it opened, it was like, it was two tones, like red and teal or something like that. Um, Six Flags took over the park. And at that time, they did paint it all black with the plans of theming it to Batman the Ride. And then oh. Chang was supposed to be themed to Riddler's Revenge, but those plans got scrapped. But they, yep, did, keep, right. they did keep the all black coat of paint. And then, um, yeah, when it reopened in, yeah, in 2014 or whatever, 2015, yeah, 2015. So to see it all red was interesting because not many 
coasters do like just one coat of paint one like one color you know like with supports yeah. and track so it's interesting like you were saying when you cross the bridge into the park um yeah you just see this all red tanglement of steel yeah and it, yeah it's some i mean it does look cool but it also looks a little odd certainly outdated you know yeah i i am a huge fan of the entire team that made uh what we thought was going to be a defunct park not defunct again yeah like they came together very grassroots style um and and reopened kentucky kingdom and i think everyone was a little shocked when you know you have this new park they're likely going to be more up to date ready to kind of draw in a younger crowd and mm -hmm. they didn't get rid of this piece of s-h-i-t <laughs> right um it's been, it's crazy to me that it's taken this long yeah well it's interesting too because so we won't go through all the history of kentucky kingdom we'll say that for another episode but we'll just say t2 opened in 95 and then the park closed for good in 2009 and the park sat dormant for five years six years actually and with all the, you know the rides were still standing but just, just sort of rotting away and originally the coke family who owns holiday world which is only like an hour down the road from kentucky kingdom they submitted a proposal to louisville to buy the park and if you read on Wikipedia, it says that the Koch family, their plans were to uh, invest a lot of money in the park. They were going to call it Bluegrass Boardwalk. Mm -hmm. And their plans called for the removal of T2 along with Twisted Twins, which is now Storm Chaser. Uh, but for whatever reason, that plan fell through. And then that's when Ed Hart came in the next yep. year and made uh, an offer to buy the park and return to the name Kentucky Kingdom and... Uh, and a part of that plan was to keep T2, which yeah. is, yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it is interesting. And and God bless Ed Hart. And I'm, <laughs> I, I am the biggest fan. Oh, if me I too. To meet him. I mean, that dude is just what you want to have. That person is who you want to have run your park. Oh, absolutely. Um, He's a treasure to the amusement park community. Like, yes, yes. And the, the man could do no wrong except for the fact that he had every <laughs> opportunity for like seven years to ditch this damn thing. Yeah. And he didn't yeah. do it. Well, <sighs> and yeah. And that's a, another thing that I think that's kind of funny about this roller coaster is I think it's widely agreed upon amongst enthusiasts that T3 is not a good coaster. And I think even, you know, up until it closed. And so uh, Kentucky Kingdom is not owned by Ed Hart anymore they sold it to uh Hershend, who owns like dollywood and silver dollar city but up until the sell of the park to them kentucky kingdom they were on social media they were very um outgoing and and funny about the park and like they even joked about t3 oh, all yeah. the time and and like yeah. they understood what they had wasn't a great coaster uh yeah, but you they know they kept it open that. right but they at least played along with the joke. Like they right. acknowledged that it was not a good coaster. So right. I think they almost made it a more pop, a popular roller coaster because how bad yeah. it was. And they yeah. were kind of like sort of not necessarily advertising it as being this like terrible coaster, but more, just like, well, more of a, it, if you can't laugh at it, you'll just cry. Kind right. Of yeah. 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 So like having sort yeah. of a sense of humor about it, which I think oh, yeah. it was the best thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we, we got to have fun and poke fun at this piece of shit that we have riding on our, our <laughs> right yeah our water park but i just i respected the fact that they weren't trying to like you know lie to our faces that this was like an awesome oh. thrill ride you know and and i mean again god bless ed hart yeah truly but a, a little little piece of a slander i have here um he kept t2 the notable difference was that change in restraint system. Don't get me wrong. Those restraints on the old school SLCs suck. Yeah. It's like oh, yeah, they're giant bad. boulders with a thin cushion. Yeah. And they're not. This... It's not a soft cushion either. It's like no. solid rubber. Oh, no. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah. Um, it but, but the uh, I don't know. People are going to disagree with me, but I would rather that than this dumbass like seat belt with yeah. the little click buttons on the side uh makes you that's, feel like you were playing the video game <laughs> yeah it does that's actually what i liked least about t3 because obviously there's so many clones of this 
ride around the country. I've been on, you know, a half a dozen of them at least. And they're all, obviously they all have the same layout, but depending on the restraint that can affect yeah. like the enjoyment level. And I don't enjoy any of them, I would say, but some are definitely better than others. I would say T3 is at the bottom of the list for me because of the restraint, which is oh. that the seatbelt yeah. over that kind of goes over your collarbone and your shoulders. And yeah, just like during the course of the ride, it just feels like it's smashing down on your collarbone. It's just so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it is hot track. And I will say uh, the SLCs that have been renovated that I've ridden like recently, um, they're not all that bad. But it's you know they they like I think of Great Nor'easter, which had almost kind of like wing coaster restraints, you know? Yeah. Like the seatbelt, and you had the bar out. And it was something similar to that. And that was fine. That was a smooth ride. And that was honestly one of my favorite SLCs. But um, yeah, even um, Thunderhawk at Michigan's Adventure, they have a oh newer gosh, style yeah. restraint, yeah. but it's not the seatbelt. It's more of a, like what you're saying, where it's more of like yeah. a soft, not, it's not a soft vest. It's sort of like a rubber vest sort of that comes down. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. It's a um, lot more, it, it does make the ride a lot more enjoyable. And I do like thunderhawk the most of the slcs that i've been on because of the restraint yeah absolutely but uh i have never uh enjoyed slcs in particular but how many would you say you've been on man i was thinking about that earlier i i think almost everyone in yeah the u.s that's still standing anyway um yeah a handful of defunct ones but is there one in what's the name of the park that's in arkansas Oh, uh, Magic Springs? Yeah, do they have one? I don't remember. I know that there's one at, uh, oh, that one in Georgia. Shoot. Um, Wild Waves? Is that? Wild no. Waves, yeah. Yeah, no, no, okay. No. It's something like Wild Adventures. Wild, Wild Adventures. Adventures, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know there's one there. Okay. At Magic Springs. Once um, you've been on one of them, though, you've been on all of them, though. I mean, it, it yeah. is nice to get the credit, but... Yeah, see, I'm not finding one there. But yeah, I, I agree. Like, I've never enjoyed any of these, but no. without it, without even a shadow of a doubt, T3 was the worst one. Yeah, and, and the way these came about, too, was in... um, So the first B&M Invert coaster, which was Batman at Six Flags Great America, opened in 1992, and this was kind of a coma's answer to the inverted coaster. I mean, it's a terrible answer to the, to oh, the B&M, but... answer possible. But I think it was probably a cheaper alternative to the B and M invert for parks like Six Flags that wanted to buy, you know, five of them at one time, right? And put them in their parks. And I'm sure they were popular for a while until people figured out, like, oh, these aren't good coasters. Horrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like we said in the beginning of the podcast, this ride was originally called T2 in the park when it opened at Kentucky Kingdom in 1995. T2, which is a terrible name, in my opinion, uh, which is is short for Terror to the Second Power or Terror Squared. Oh, just and then awful. and Ed Hart, I guess this is another strike against Ed Hart. He had the opportunity to change this terrible name when they reopened the park. And I guess he did change the name, but in a way made it a worse name. Oh, I, it, who Terror to the Third awesome. Power. Terror Cubed. It just and, doesn't sound good. Yeah, I I guess in their mind, I mean, it's sort of like Top Thrill Dragster is now Top Thrill 2. Oh, I mean, which is a whole other issue. Yeah, yeah, I guess they wanted, you know, opening the reopening it as Kentucky Kingdom. Maybe he thought paying an homage to T2 by keeping it T3 is what people would want. Mm -hmm. Sure, I guess. And sure. their uh, justification oh. for saying that it's to the third power is because it did, it did have the new restraints. And it had the new paint job, so mm -hmm. I guess it, was it for right. The, so what it's worth, right? So that's how you got terror to the third power. Yeah, and what a piece of trash! If you, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you never got this credit, don't worry. I kind of wish I never did either. Yeah, um, I will. Say, yeah, I was I, gonna say I wrote twice ever. Yeah. No, I, I wrote it one time, and I will say it is. It's probably that either T2, sorry, T3, or Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland. Those are my two least favorite roller coasters that I've ever been on. Yep. 
Yep. Out of the 360 coasters that I've been on, those are the two worst that come to mind. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. I think mm-hmm. Time Warp is awful. I think T3 is terrible. I would put, I haven't ridden the Predator since it got tightened. Oh, yeah. Um, uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I would put that up there too, along <laughs> with Wildcat from Hershey Park. So. Yeah, I haven't been on Predator yet, so but I've heard terrible things. Yeah. But even when when they announced the closure of T2, sorry, T3, it's called T3 at the which was it was at the beginning of the 2023 yeah. season, right? It was never like open April. at all this past coaster season, right? Yeah, it was I think it was like April they made the announcement. Yeah. It was sort of a surprise. Like there was no there was nothing that made me think like, oh, this is I mean we all I knew would've... it was coming someday. But... Right. Like it should have closed really a decade ago. So sure. I had no reason to think like, oh, they're going to close it now. And certainly like I think I do think if Ed Hart was still the owner of this park and they did decide to close it, they probably would have announced it, you know, a couple months ahead of time so people could come and ride it, you know, just because yeah. it was sort of a lovable joke of a coaster, you know, mm-hmm. but Hershen. The Hershen family obviously didn't have any nostalgic feelings for this coaster, so they just decided just to, you know, it's done. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You don't get a last we'll chance to ride. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. just done. But it is still standing as far as I know. I don't think they've started taking it down at all. Or, no, they haven't. Um, it will be interesting to see what they do with this plot of land once they do remove it from the park. They were rumored oh it actually is a confirmation that they were supposed to be getting rmc raptor coaster oh yeah right before covid happened and they i think they put a deposit down or were committed to buying a coaster but because of covid they backed out and that ended up going to silverwood Mm -hmm. and is now called stunt pilot so maybe the they're still interested in getting an rmc raptor coaster maybe they'll do something else when, when you think about that plot of land T2's on, like, it's fairly small. It's pretty uh, tight, I would say, mm-hmm. Yeah. for that little area. Um, so I, I think I think an RMC Raptor would be good. It would fit. Um, I hope they would do, like, a custom layout, though, not a clone. Right, yeah. And that's what I was going to say is, like, I, it would be hard to make, like, if they copied and pasted, um, you know, Wonder Woman. Like, yeah. I don't think that would work there. No, um, no. So they'd have to do its own custom layout. And I'm not sure if the Jersey Devil model would fit because oh, no. that's more of like a, a long, like out and back yeah. sort of model. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think a custom is the way to go. I mean, they could use a launch coaster at that park. I don't know what their budget is, but like a launch coaster would be cool. Yeah. And they haven't added a coaster since Kentucky Flyer, which was 2019, I think, 2018, yep. 2019. So yeah, they're overdue and I do like that park a lot. I kind of forget about it sometimes, especially since the Hershen family has taken over yeah. just it's because they don't, wild. they don't have much of a presence on social media anymore. Exactly. They they do, but it's not what they had before. Now it's just sort of like a boring corporate sort of presence where it's just forgettable. Yeah. Whereas before it was, uh, it seemed more uh, personal and, I don't know. I think they had a good thing going for a while. I do like what the Hershen family's done with Dollywood and Silver Doll- Dollar City. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's good for the park that they took it over. But I do think they lost some of the charm that they had with Ed Hart. Yeah, and and thank God, uh, you know, I'm sure Six Flags probably approached, and thank God they yeah didn't, uh, yeah uh-huh. we tried that once it uh-huh. flopped it closed right. down almost for good yeah. Um, then you would really have zero charm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, um, but back in its heyday, we know that as you, if you've listened to the Airtime Misfits podcast, you know that we love a good cheesy commercial. Oh yeah, and this so is back a... in its heyday. This was yeah. a nineteen ninety five commercial. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things about doing this podcast is talking about the old roller coasters and then going back and finding the commercial from the coaster, yeah. uh, just to see. Obviously, they're you know. This is 95, so it's very of that era of, like, the creepy voice and all that. Yeah, so we're going to check this commercial out. This is for K- Kentucky Kingdom T2 Roller Coaster, commercial 1995. Put your feet up. Lay your head down. Lay your head Close down. your <laughs> eyes. 
and pray. Oh, yeah. I love how in these commercials, it was just stock video. Like, they didn't even try and animate it to look like what it would look like at the park. Right. Yeah, that's something I did notice. When you present a can wow. from that, I mean, white and teal, that was Condor. Yeah. Back. So, oh, yeah. That's cool. Admission was only oh, sixteen ninety five. If you uh, bring in any Pepsi product, that's pretty cheap. You cannot beat that. I yeah, mean, but yeah, in the commercial, it did feature some like live action of a uh, Vacoma SLC, but it was clearly not T two. It was probably El Condor, mm-hmm. at Wallaby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I love the guy's creepy voice. You pointed out earlier to me before we started recording that it sounded like the uh, the narrator from The Grinch that stole Christmas. You're a meatball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's just comically deep voice. You know? Yeah. Well, they tried so hard back then to like make coasters oh, it... like, cr- you know, scary and like these like villain, you know, like these horror creatures or whatever. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. Or it was it was either that or you were in the era of the Ride Warriors. Like uh-huh. yeah. the badass, like you're a badass, I'm a badass. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like that like, came like early two thousands was yeah. like the, the badass era of roller coaster <laughs> commercials and like the nineties, like with Mantis or uh oh, yeah. yeah, like with this coaster, it's like sort of like this horror movie like He's going to get you in your dreams. Like that kind you of angle. You were ready for this. <laughs> yeah. You thought you were safe. <laughs> You're dead There's wrong. Nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere to hide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that I got the credit. I appreciated That's the dope. coaster. Like, like I said before, the, the prior ownership at heart that, social media staff kind of made me have a new appreciation for t3 for what it was the terrible coaster that it was so there was there was a very tiny spot for it in my heart just because you kind of it's like this lovable terrible thing you know that you kind of root for but yeah (laughs) right but i am not sad whatsoever that it's gone no and i'm excited to see what will replace it I know exactly. That's what I was gonna say. I can't agree more. Like you said, they're overdue for a new coaster as it is, and it just makes sense that since they need that new addition to just get rid of this, yeah, terrible. Like it just it's smart. I, it's better than building on new land or something like yeah. that, where you yeah yeah potentially expand in the future. You know, so in Hershend, I think they bought the park. This was, I think, their second season that they just finished up so i think they've been through two seasons as owners of kentucky kingdom they haven't really added much other than events and i probably a lot of infrastructure type of stuff so i would expect now that that is kind of all under control and on brand with their hershen brand i would expect them to now start investing into new rides yep i couldn't agree more i think they they've got a couple really cool flat rides Mm -hmm. um i could definitely see after whatever takes over that land on t3 i could see them building where they were going to build that raptor out there by storm chaser yep um putting either a raptor or something else in there maybe yep um so yeah i think there's i think they're just being strategic they're trying to play chess and not checkers and and make the small moves to kind of get to the bigger pictures so i think yeah i think that's smart it makes business sense. sense yeah where they're trying, you know, they're looking at the big picture rather than short term. Yeah. So let's start uh, kind of attacking our weaknesses and then build yep. out from there. So, yeah, that's how that's, I see it. That's the way you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, that is T3. If you didn't ride it, you didn't miss much. And oh. if you really regret not riding it, go ride one of the other dozen Pacoma oh. SLCs around the country. Yeah, take your pick, honestly. It's it's all the same. <laughs> yeah. Some are better than others, but uh, I would expect really... most yeah, I, I was gonna say I would expect most of these models to be gone yeah. within the next decade. Oh, they have to be. They're yeah. they're a decade old. I mean they're yeah. a decade past what they should have been. Yeah. Gone, so. I think they're most of them are on their way out. So Yeah, they have to be. Ride one before they're all gone, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or, or don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> right. You won't be missing much. Right. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to try to get back on track with recording these. Check us out at, on Instagram and Twitter at Airtime Misfits. That's it's and, X now. 
Oh, sorry. On X. On X. X. Formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, you can find us there. Mostly Instagram, I would say. But anyways, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. See you.